everyone! As you probably all know, Apple recently made a mandate that all apps coming into the App Store must now be Retina compliant. This means that you now need to make two versions of your file assets and save them at different sizes, one Retina and one standard, so your app can play on older versions of the iPad as well as newer ones with Retina. So, my workflow needed to change a bit to accommodate this. In the past, I worked with screen dimensions of 1024 by 768 pixels, and now I create my artwork um, using Retina screen dimensions of 2048 by 1536 first. Working with Retina first is necessary because you can scale down from Retina, but you can't scale up from standard without losing information and making your artwork appear pixelated. So the process for saving assets is the same. You take the layer that you want, crop it, and then save for web and devices. Save it as a PNG because that um, retains the, the transparency. Um, and as you remember, I created this artwork in Retina, so I'm going to have to scale it down by 50% to be standard size. And we're going to find the folder that I created called Retina Images and save it as boy.png. And then we're going to have to do this again, file save for web and devices, but this time we're going to leave it at 100% and save it as boy-ipadhd. Um, for the retina asset. And this is going to be the naming convention throughout all of your assets that you're exporting. Um, the standard image is going to be just a regular name and then the retina image is going to be the name plus the end tag of iPad HD. So we're going to go ahead and save that and the as you can tell this process can become a bit tedious especially if you have a a whole bunch of assets on one page and you have to export now double the amount, uh, including having to do this naming convention. But we have a really helpful Photoshop script that sort of automates this process and exports um, layers by their name and exports uh, retina and standard and adds the end tag to this retina images so you don't have to do any of that. Um, so just go ahead and download the script. Um, you can find it at the bottom of this video and you're gonna then go to downloads and find it under let's see export for iOS JSX and you're going to have to go to Applications and open up Photoshop, then Presets, and then look for Scripts. And in Scripts, you're going to drag over this export for iOS 1, um, and then just drag it in. And you're going to probably want to quit out of Photoshop before you try and open it up because it needs to have time to um, read. Go ahead and quit. And then we can open it up again. And hopefully this script will now be downloaded. We'll open up the most recent document that we had. And then we're going to go to File, Scripts and look for the export for iOS. And as you can see, it's right here. Just go ahead and click on that. And then this window will appear. And you can see that the base name is going to be whatever name you have named for the layer. You can export sizes of regular plus retina, regular only or retina only. For this, we're going to do both. We're going to do regular plus retina. and then. You're going to check this clip to layer bounds. So um, the boy will be clipped to his direct dimensions instead of using the entire page dimensions. Um, and then Coco's 2D suffix convention is the iPad HD, save for iPad. And then we're just going to click OK. And it's going to ask me where I want to save it. Retina images, open. And then it just goes through and makes it 
really easy. Go ahead and wait for that to finish up. Takes a couple minutes, but should be finishing up pretty soon. And it's done. And we're going to go to our desktop and find the folder. Retina images, and here they all are at the correct dimensions. So, saves a lot of time, and I would definitely recommend it.